Hi, welcome back. I'm Gary Lynn Sananian at the Armenian Museum of America, and I'm here today to share another one of our artifacts with you. This is a copper cauldron, as you may have noticed. It's rather large. Actually, it's too large to fit through the doorways. So usually I bring the pieces up to the library and talk about them, but because this is so large, I'm actually sitting in the storeroom, one of our storerooms in the museum, uh, with the cauldron here. And that's some of our rugs in the collection there behind me. Uh, cauldron like this was very important in the community. This particular one, 37 inches wide, 38 inches wide. And you can see along the bottom here, the seam, right along here, was two separate pieces. The bottom part was hammered to turn it upward, and this other piece was added to it, and then it was welded together to make this very large piece. Extremely heavy, very rugged. And these were used um, in manufacture sometimes for making soap or dyes, etc. But the mostly used for eating. Very important. And um, these were used in the communities. Uh, this particular piece was originally acquired by a donor in the 1950s in Turkey. Uh, the husband and wife, the husband was in the Air Force, the United States Air Force Station in Turkey. And they found this in a bazaar. And they bought the piece as a planter. They, um, they shipped it to America, which was easy because it was the Air Force. So they just put on an Air Force cargo plane. They flew it to the US. And it ended up in Michigan as their planter. They had this very odd inscription on the inside. They couldn't identify it at first. And uh, somebody said, oh, that's an Armenian. And so when they decided to get um, the downsize, they needed to find a home for their big planter, they donated to the museum. We were very excited to get it. It's the largest cauldron we have in our collection. And what's particularly interesting is the inscription. The inscription, this was a gift to the Church of Sopsarkis in Gortney. Gortney is in Sebastia. Uh, here's a picture of uh, here's a map of Armenia here. This is a map used in the British Blue Books. Uh, back in 1915. And over here you see Sebastia Sivas, and going up to its shop in Kawahisa, right there is Gotni, the village of Sebastia. There were a lot of Gotnitsis who actually immigrated to New England. I met one once when I was young uh, in Indian Orchard, and they most of them ended up in around the Springfield area or down in Rhode Island. And, and uh, so this was actually made for the church in Gotni by this. Um, a donor the, uh, by a, a gentleman, uh, what is the gentleman's name now? Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Nikol Kaha and his two sons, Sirach and Madros. And it was gifted to the church in 1894. And this would be very important in the church as a, for the communal meal. This actually makes um, enough food for, say, 60 people. And they would make harissa in it. Harissa is a kind of Armenian porridge which is you, you take basically um, the good, which is uh, wheat kernels, and you stew it with, uh, in, the, in the original tradition, it was uh, lamb. And you would basically cook it all night, 24 hours. So all night long, somebody would be stirring it. The brick and shift stirred it. So it come out with this, uh, it would be, you cook it for so long that all the meat breaks down. So when you look at it, it looks like a straight porridge. You don't see the meat in it because it's all dissolved into it. They still make it today, mostly on the top of the stove, you use chicken instead. If you go to a function in like Watertown or Los Angeles, they probably use beef, but the tradition was lamb. Um, anyway, so they would make this harissa, and this was a communal meal. And this would be particularly on holy days, feast days, you would have this. And so everybody would have their bowl and then ladle it out. And it's a little on the bland side, so you put a little butter on it, a paprika. And they would all eat together. And what's important was that this whole communal meal of everybody eating together in the church. This was a, a very special occasion for the community to do this. So it was a, a ritual that they all, all the churches engaged in. They all had large cauldrons like this. Uh, of course, the community was wiped out in 1915. The, the, uh, the few survivors, as I said, some ended up in Springfield and some down in Rhode Island. But the community was gone. And of course, this survived. And so, this is a memento, a keepsake of the community, the lost community of Cotney, the Armenians of Cotney. The piece probably ended up in a, when they killed the Armenians, they probably saved this piece, the, the Turks, uh, because it was very useful. So they, they kept it. It was probably used for some sort of industry. You can probably see, you can see down here this mark, right, circular area here. 
at some point they knocked a hole in the cauldron. So when they were using it for some, whatever industry was being used, and you can drain it out through that hole. Then later on they sealed it up again. So it's a very impressive piece. It uh, has a real history behind it, both of Gutney, the genocide, and the, the fact that how it came to us. And we were very lucky to acquire it uh, for the museum. We were very thankful for the donor. And this is part of our history. Uh, we're, you know, the museum is here to try to collect these objects and save them for later generations. And um, we will certainly make our attempt with this piece. It's a wonderful uh, example of Armenian metalware. The Armenian Museum is here to share our stories and history with you, the public. We thank you for joining us. We hope you join us again. And until then, stay safe.